Good evening. Good evening. And welcome, everyone, to this December 11th, 2023 Eugene City Council uh, meeting and a uh, meeting of the Urban Renewal Agency and public hearings. We have a full agenda tonight and we have a very full room. So thank you all for, for joining us in this hybrid meeting format. Anyone wishing to access the meeting can do so by watching the live stream available on our website, the broadcast on Comcast 20, uh, Channel 21, or by following the access instructions listed for this meeting on the city's public webcast and meeting materials web page. Uh, Tonight's meeting will include a public comment period, as you all are prepared for, I can tell. If you are here in person and wish to speak to council, please fill out a request to speak form available either on the public webcast and meeting materials webpage or at the entrance to the room. And I know many of you have already taken care of that, and we accept those forms until 735. Those forms are used to generate the random order of speakers and to correctly enter the speaker's names into the public record. For those who are joining the meeting remotely, you are welcome to email your comments to the City Council. As a reminder, Council's uh, Council meetings, we have some rules of conduct here. And so we don't allow flags, signs, loud or disruptive language, noise, any conduct that would dis dis disrupt our ability to conduct business. We are seeking to keep this a quiet and respectful place so that people feel comfortable speaking at the podium uh, so that we can hear what they have to say and that um, and that everyone, it's a, just a respectful space space so people may say things that you disagree with they'll say things that you agree with if you agree you're always welcome to wave your fingers in silent support and um, but please just keep it quiet and respectful for everybody who is here to speak and then uh, i see many of you are wearing masks and uh, there may be some more masks in the back for those of you who need them we have separated the chairs so you can keep some distance and appreciate anyone who is not feeling well or has been exposed to someone who is ill uh, to to actually uh, not not stay in the person in person here if you if you can avoid so all right so with that we have a couple of formal uh things to do at the beginning of the meeting and the first is a land acknowledgement since time immemorial, the Kalapuya people have been the indigenous stewards to our region, building dynamic communities, maintaining balance with wildlife, and enacting sustainable land practices. This land acknowledgement is a way of resisting the erasure of indigenous histories and of honoring native communities by inviting truth and reconciliation. Following treaties between 1851 and 1855, Kalapuya people were dispossessed of their indigenous homeland by the United States government and forcibly removed to the coast reservation in Western Oregon. As we consider the impacts of colonization, we also acknowledge the strength and resiliency of displaced indigenous people. The city of Eugene is built within the traditional homelands known as Kalapuya Ilahi. Kalapuya descendants are citizens of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of Siletz Indians of Oregon. They continue to make contributions in our communities here and across the lands. We express our respect for the inherent political sovereignty of all federally recognized tribal nations and indigenous people who live in the state of Oregon and across the nation. And now uh, we also have a ceremonial matter. We're going to do this a little bit differently than we normally do. We have uh, yesterday, December 10th, was um, the anniversary of the uh, Declaration, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And so I know many of you here are to speak to us about our resolution. Um, but this is a separate document that we're going to we're going to read first uh, in honor of that that anniversary of this Universal Declaration. And it has uh, we are going to read it uh, together. So each counselor will take turns to eat, read each of the whereas items in this document. So Human Rights <clears throat> Day Proclamation, I will turn to Councillor Semple to take us off. United Nations approved the Universal Declaration of Human Rights on December 10th, 1948, and... Whereas the United States played a pivotal role in the creation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and... 
whereas the basic human rights addressed in the Universal Declaration include economic, social, and cultural rights, as well as civil and political rights, all considered to be equally important in fostering human dignity and freedom. And... Whereas the Universal Declaration calls for all people and governments at all levels to promote and respect the rights that it recognizes and provides a standard of achievement for governments throughout the world and... This one. The squared one. Right there. Whereas the commitment by the United States to these standards is essential to ensure equality and justice for all uh, home and abroad and... Councillor Evans, you're up. I guess he's not up. Okay, I can I'll let you do it. Whereas Eugene is a human rights city and acknowledges there is more to be done as a city in which the fundamental principles of the Universal Declaration inform and guide the daily lives of everyone in our community and to benefit of all and whereas in light of continuing events in our country, as well as in the world where refugees, immigrants, and minorities have experienced a rash of hate crimes against them, the city of Eugene stands in defense of the human and civil rights of all its residents. And whereas December 10, 2023 is the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and this anniversary is being celebrated throughout this nation and in nations across the globe. Now, therefore, I, Lucy Venice, mayor of the city of Eugene, Oregon, do hereby proclaim December 10th, 2023, to be Human Rights Day in Eugene, Oregon, and encourage all people to work together in the coming year to achieve greater progress in respecting, protecting, and fulfilling the full range of human rights contained in the Universal Declaration for all members of our community. Thank you all very much. That was, it was wonderful. Okay, with that, we are ready to move on to committee reports and items of interest. Do I have councillors with reports or items? Uh, Councillor Keating. Thanks, Mayor. Um, it's a point of interest uh, to uh, mention that, that Becca and I attended Aaron Sorkin's adapted version of Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird last weekend. Um, I want to thank the Holt Center, IOTC members, and the cast and crew uh, for a powerful and timely production. If you missed out, you really missed out. Um, go rent the movie, read the book. Uh, but it was a it was a powerful show, and great to see that level of uh, of performance caliber and set design and, and execution at our very own Holt Center. Senator Manning and I attended uh, over the weekend, Mayor, a roundtable conversation hosted by U.S. Senator Ron Wyden and Congresswoman Val Hoyle centering around the potential for Western Oregon um, to, uh, well, the potential for a port of Coos Bay that would benefit all of, of Western Oregon. A fascinating conversation, but I'm saddened that I was unable to attend. I, I, I suspect there were some friends here among us today who attended um, James Jacobson's celebration of life. So I just wanted to pause and remember um, uh, such an icon in the activist world. Uh, if there was an anti-war rally, if there was a pro-worker rally, a social justice rally, you can bet you would see James Jacobson, James Jacobson uh, in attendance and usually wearing his purple SEI, SEIU uh, t-shirt. So I want to uh, thank James for, well, I want to honor James Jacobson's life and uh, recognize his ongoing commitment to social justice in our community. Thank you so much for that. Uh, any other comments from counselors? I have just I have just one. It's very pertinent. I attended on Saturday the our Human Rights Commission, Eugene's Human Rights Commission, hosted an afternoon session of in honor of International Human Rights Day and had a panel that included. Uh, representatives from all of our communities, the so, um, Jewish Federation, NAACP, uh, uh, members from the Islamic community, from the Latino community, from the disabled community, 
Um, I'm sure I'm missing someone, but uh, and they had a phenomenal. It was very few members of the public, but it was an incredible conversation, and I believe it's filmed. So those of you can watch it if you will. It was a really um, inspiring evidence of people coming together to talk about hard issues and how we move forward as a, as a community to do better, uh, where there are gaps and where we need to work on. And um, I was I was both proud. I was proud of the community for both the the Human Rights Commission for convening it, and then for the members of the public who who volunteered their time to be part of this really, really powerful conversation. So thanks to all of them. And um, with that, I think if there are no other points, I uh, will turn to Council President for consent calendar. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the items on consent calendar one. Second. All in favor, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That passes. Thank you very much. And with that, we are ready for the public comment. The public comment period is an opportunity for individuals to speak to the city council on any city related issues, except for those items which have already been heard by a hearings official. And I want to note for all of you that this comment period is restricted to 90 minutes. And um, we usually can get through about 32 or 33 people in 90 minutes. So. Um, if you can condense your remarks to less than the allotted two and a half minutes, that will enable as many people as possible who are in the room to have a chance to speak. So I just encourage you to do that. And uh, with that, I'll turn to Cherish to share the list. Hi, Mayor. We have, oh, 50. I will scroll through it more slowly. I we have 53 speakers this evening. Okay. Okay. I will announce two names at a time. When you are called to speak, please state your name and your ward or neighborhood, if known, before beginning your comments. If you are announced as the next speaker, please move to the seat in the front row designated for the next speaker. When it is your turn, you may come to the podium. Please, please. leave any... Sorry, like, could you all be quiet, please, as she's trying to read through this? Thank you. Please leave any bags you may have with you at your seat. If you have documents to give counsel, please place them in the basket near the podium. You will have two and a half minutes to speak. There's a timer at the podium. A yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds to complete your comments. The red light indicates the end of the two and a half minutes. Your microphone will be muted at the two and a half minute mark. Please note that the use of profanity is prohibited during public comment, and any instances of profanity will remote will result in immediate termination of speaking privileges. Our first speaker this evening is Allison Kim Hazelhurst, followed by Marin Widmer. Do I speak here? Okay. Um, good evening, Council. Uh, we're here tonight to represent one of Eugene's sister cities. Um, and so our committee has worked very hard to communicate and schedule a uh, youth ambassador exchange. And so tonight we'd like to have two of our youth ambassadors read the essays. Um, this is referring to their experience that they had when they traveled to Jinju, South Korea this last summer. Um, we, weren't, we did not have our exchange program take place in the past few years since 2019 because of the pandemic so we resumed the travel program um there were nine students involved two chaperones and um these three kids there's a, a third student that isn't here tonight um they were visiting jinju for two weeks and then the, all of the kids came back to eugene and they experienced cultural and historic visits to our area. And so we're really proud of our students and we're happy to work with the Eugene Sister City program. And so the first presenter is Callan Widmer and she is a senior at Willamette High School. Okay. Um, hello, um, my name is Callan Widmer and that's my sister, Marin. <laughs> Um, we were two of the three students who traveled to Korea in July, um, where we were uh, the representation of uh, our home in our city while we visited. Um, while there, I learned a lot about the world and, and also myself, um, and I'd like to read some of that to you tonight. Um, 
being in South Korea and getting to experience life and the culture there, um, I witnessed many new values, ways of thinking, and opinions um, that were a lot different than what I'm accustomed to here in America. Um, an example of this that uh, is that most schools there are separated by gender, actually all schools, um, and boys and girls don't generally get to interact with each other um, together the way we do here until they reach adulthood. Um, this was something that really stood out to me while I was there and something that made me think about the different ways that my host sisters and I had grown up. Um, there were actually uh, also quite a few similarities between our cultures as well that we found, um, some being the curiosity to learn about others and um, the emphasis both cultures put on school. Although we do it in different ways, both feel that education is very vital for um, their children. Getting to see these, among other similarities, between our similarly, seemingly very distinct cultures has helped emphasize to me how important I think experiencing unknown things is to individual growth and world connectedness and has given me a sense of what I want to do with my life, something that will benefit um, people all over the world regardless of differences and that will continue to educate and better myself. This experience has showed me that I am capable of being independent and self-sufficient as there were many instances where I was responsible for not only myself and my well-being, but also my younger sisters and the other uh, student that we traveled with, uh, in addition to representing my country for Jinju and my host families. Uh, I felt like get going somewhere so new, being able to ensure safety and happiness assured me that I could handle life well on my own. I feel more confident thinking about college life and the future beyond that now as well, and as well as being a more poised woman going to find a career and a path in life. I feel that I cannot yet know how fully this has impacted me, but I am excited to find out and I have learned that while I may not know what will come of it, taking risks can result in huge enrichments in my life. I'm excited to continue to see the world and look forward to discovering what new things life will bring me next. Um, hi, my name is Marin Widmer, uh, her little sister. And um, I wanted to go to Korea on this exchange because it sounded like a positive new experience that I would never get to have again. And that is exactly what it was. While we were in Seoul, I got to meet new people, see a huge city, and try delicious food I've never had before. When we got to Jinju, it was all those things, but even better because we were with our host families. I am so grateful for Sola, Kyunbin, and Dahe's family for taking such good care of my sister and I. I felt safe and cared for when I was with them. I had an amazing time doing the activities the committee prepared for us, from the woodcraft to the palaces to the boat ride at night. It was a great way to see their city and try new things. I also loved the places our host families took us on the weekend. We went to Masan and saw the ocean. We went to a beautiful temple and played in the water. And all of us girls went to a drawing cafe and out to dinner together. In Korea, it felt like the city of Jinju was excited for us to be there. It was so welcoming and special to feel cared for by so many people. They put our names up in their city hall and pictured, er, and pictures of us were in their newspaper also. I feel like the Jinju community did a wonderful job showing us both historical sites and fun teenage activities. Korea is so rich in history, we could have spent a whole trip in museums, palaces, and temples, which would have been really amazing. All the historical sites we went to were very gorgeous but their committee balanced history with age-related fun activities also. As a group, we went to the movies, the mall, and um, a video game place called D-World, and a gondola ride to an aquarium. These things were super fun, and it felt like we were experiencing what our host siblings got to do every day. I feel that I couldn't have had a better trip to Korea, and I hope the Korean kids felt the same about their trip here. I had so much fun taking my new friends around to do the things I had been doing my whole life that they had never gotten to do before. I got, or I think I have changed as a person since going to Korea. I see myself at home with my family and at school and class. When I am at home, it occurs to me more often what I have that others don't. When we were in Korea, they had apartments in the city, which was a very different type of beauty than I was used to. I am so much more conscious now that I am luckily to, lucky to have a beautiful backyard, my own place to be outside, which I love having access to. As I, at school, I see the change in me, especially during human geography class. In that class, we learn about world geography, how people interact with the environment and cultures. Um, I think this is a very amazing program. It, provides great opportunities to kids. I was so lucky to do it with my sister and our friend, Jess. Hi. Great. All right. Thank you, Allison, Marin, and Callan. Our next speaker is Emily Beatty, followed by Stefan Streck. Okay. 
Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Emily Beatty. I'm a resident of West Eugene and a graduate student at the University of Oregon. I'm also a member of the Graduate Teaching Fellows Federation, our graduate union at University of Oregon. I'm here to call on the Eugene City Council to call for a permanent ceasefire in Palestine and to not follow in the tracks of other elected officials, including the vast majority of our federal Congress people and the president in obscuring the reality of genocide currently unfolding in Palestine. Two weeks ago, many members of our community spoke to this council and demanded you all call for a permanent ceasefire and you have responded with a watered down resolution to be discussed here tonight, which actually, I'm sorry, before I wrote this, I found out that it was already unanimously approved. Uh, and we are here to tell you that this is completely unacceptable and that we insist on our elected officials respond to the demands of our constituent of their constituents. This is not optional. It is your job. As we stand here once again demanding your calls, uh, your calls for a ceasefire, Palestinians continue to suffer from the, from the violence of the Israeli occupation, facing hunger, disease, all forms of violence and death, suffering that has been openly aided by our president in opposition of the public's mobilization towards justice for Palestine. If we cannot make the president listen, then you will have to listen as we demand that you use your positions to support this community's calls to end the assault of Palestinians. Your performance of a reading of the International Declaration of Human Rights is hollow, devoid of commitment, and entirely unconvincing if the steps you take as a council make no legitimate effort to acknowledge the inhumanity of the geno genocidal campaign against Palestinians or to use your authority to pressure other elected officials from undue harm, uh, pressure other elected officials to stop undue harm as fervently as possible. Eugene demands a permanent ceasefire now, and we will continue to show up until this council stands with us. Thank you, and free Palestine. Thank you. Our next speaker is Stefan Streck, followed by Anna Rain. Okay. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you all for coming down here to take the time to listen to everyone, uh, City Council. It's uh, great to see everyone down here together, and especially with so many people from around the community. It's really something I look forward to. I just wanted to give a formal acknowledgement uh, once again on just how amazing my cat was that recently passed away. He's been really super, just a daily reminder that there are some things that really just, they're, they're too good for this world. And that's really what he was. He was, uh, 20 pounds of just inspiration and constant awe, really. Uh, most cats that show up on my porch, they just hang out and then, you know, get some free food, scoot along. But uh, little Flubber stuck around. He really never gave up. He had his claws in for the long haul. And I really respect that attitude, something that more people should have. And always inspired me to come down here and speak my mind just like he did first thing in the morning every morning uh just wanting more food and to live his best life i remember i'd actually uh throw a pel pillow at the little guy to get him to quiet down and he uh learned to actually hang out around the corner of the door and just claw on the door frame where he was out of range really really respectable but um there's always uh, more good to be done in this world. And I am so proud to be part of a community that works so hard to take care of more animals. And uh, speaking of which, uh, Todd Boyle, how's Pumpkin doing? Nope, is he good? <laughs> Stefan's last cat ran off and he lives in my house now. Yeah, yeah, Pumpkin's pretty awesome. He was gonna hang out at my house forever, but managed to pawn one, one cat off, so. You know, uh, you win some, you lose some. And uh, thank you, Todd Boyle, for your work in the community. I really respect that. He's a cool guy. And, uh, yeah, I hope everyone just rolls into the new year uh, working their best to create a better world. And I really know that we can do this together. Thank you so much. We're still in this together. Yeah. Thank you, Stefan. Our next speaker is Anna Rain, followed by Eloise Parrish Mueller. Good evening, Councilor members. My name is Anna Rain, and I'm from Springfield. I've lived here for the past 20 years of my life, and I really love this city. 
I'm going to read an excerpt on analysis on national Palestinian liberation and the women's struggle. We must refuse to allow the Zionists and all that are in league with them to weaponize the concept of women's suffering to advance their own colonial interests in Palestine. This has been a tactic that has been championed by the imperialists to manage consent or to manufacture consent for the bloody genocide all throughout the global south. It is our duty to kill this myth and to push back against the imperialist disinformation campaigns and to fervently support the restoration of nationhood to the Palestinian people against their settler occupiers. In the settler colony, the contradiction around colonial exploitation and the genocide supersedes all other social contradictions. There is no way for the Palestinian woman masses to eliminate patriarchy without first asserting the political right to self-determination and nationhood as a colonized people. As Marxists, thus dialectical materialists, we know that the Zionist occupation must fall for women's liberation to prevail, and that the continued colonial exploitation disposition and genocide of Palestine must be addressed. Free Palestine, thank you. Thank you, Anna. Our next speaker is Eloise Parrish Mueller, followed by Susan Harada. Is there an Eloise Mueller in the room? Okay, our next speaker is Susan Harada, followed by either Eloise or, or Ryder Hales. Hi, my name is Susan Hirata. This summer and fall, I was a volunteer canvasser for Star Voting. One of the positive things about gathering signatures is that we are out in the community directly engaged in having conversations with Eugene voters. In the months of talking to folks, I found that people are concerned about our current voting system. Some had heard about Star Voting and couldn't understand why it wasn't on the ballot the first time. Some were aware and concerned about voting problems in other states, particularly in Maine and Alaska, and some of the problems with their voting system, and they wanted to talk about that. And many, in fact, had not heard about star voting and were curious enough to ask questions and um, have a conversation with me. After a 10 second explanation that I gave about star voting, the majority were really encouraged by this voting method. The process makes sense to them, they like that it was a scoring method and that it gives a nuanced vote across that the voter is able to give a nuanced vote across the slate of candidates. Some said that they then then at the end, some said, well, actually, this is really interesting. I'm really interested in this, but I never sign petitions. So I'm not going to sign your petition, but I'd love to take your information. I'm going to look at it some more and I'm going to talk to friends about it and more people in the community about it. So there's definitely interest in the community. People understand that voting is the cornerstone of our democracy. They want their vote to count and, their want, and they want their voice to be heard. They want a change and star voting intuitively makes sense and appeals to them. Thousands of gathered signatures show that the electorate wants to vote on this. I encourage counselors to meet with star voting team if you have any questions or concerns about star voting and they can give you all the information that they have. And one last side note, um, in the community, I help run a social justice film festival and every person in the audience who watches the film is allowed to, is given a ballot to to vote for the audience choice of that film. So it's easy, everybody knows how to do it. It's zero to five, you 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 score each vote, each film that you see. You don't need to- Thank you, Susan, your time is concluded. Our next speaker is Eloise Parrish Mueller, if she, if she has appeared, and I'm not seeing an Eloise come up. So our next speaker will be Ryder Hales, followed by Michael Curtin. Uh, 
Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Ryder Hales. I'm a first year PhD student here at the University of Oregon and a member of the Graduate Teaching uh, Fellows Foundation. Uh, so I've only lived in the town for a little less than a year, but I'll hopefully be here for several more. Um, and I'm delighted to be here in front of the council for the first time. Uh, I live in the wonderful Jefferson Westside neighborhood, um, and I'm a it's been a treat to um, continue to be part of this community and uh, build my uh, career as I enter the world. Um, and I uh, love the opportunity to uh, have the city council with whom I can uh, request for a call for immediate ceasefire and end of occupation. Um, I share the same views as uh, many of us here. And uh, yeah, we would very much like it if you do what you can to uh, do the right thing and call for the end of the occupation and to free Fal uh, Palestine on behalf of the university, um, GTFF and the uh, city of Oregon, please do the right thing. Thank you for your time. Good evening. Thank you, Ryder. Our next speaker is Michael Curtin, followed by Todd Boyle. I don't want to, there's too much uh, detail to go into for why to support star voting basically what i'm here tonight to ask is that you uh that the council uh make a motion to cancel the later work session to oppose star voting all i'm asking for is the opportunity for it to get on the ballot so that people have the opportunity to vote for it and that the the council not actively uh, oppose the the people who brought forth this uh this bill or this proposal so uh i don't have a whole lot more to say that's just please don't fight with it just listen to what we're asking for thank you thank you michael our next speaker is todd boyle followed by louis vidmar todd boyle ward two uh i'm a Veteran, I'm a U of O duck from 1978, and I've been living in Eugene for a few years. Anyway, so it's time for some really serious uh, reflection on what's going on in Gaza right now. It's really past time for the people of the United States to think more deeply about what we've been supporting. We've been supporting a uh, a government that doesn't reflect our values. It's a uh, basically an apartheid government that doesn't give equal rights to most of its citizens, and uh, it's evil. And there is a time, there have been times in our lifetime when the United States government has done very evil things. Let's say the invasion of Iraq, who was not a threat to the United States, never attacked the United States. There was no reason to be, the Al-Qaeda was not in Iraq. And uh, where is our moral compass? There's There comes a time when each of us needs to, to speak out and take a stand when something is wrong. This is wrong, what's going on now. And like all wars, it's unnecessary. What Israel's doing in Gaza, not necessary. It's also immoral. It's also unwise. It, it creates consequences that will ripple on for many generations. This country has barely gotten over the the Civil War. It, the echoes of that are still burned into the souls of, and the, the World War II generation. I was born during the Korean War. We heard many nice thoughts about Korea. I audited in Korea. These, and we with North Korea, we are still bearing the consequences of MacArthur and all of that philosophy. And uh, I fought against the war in Vietnam. That was an evil war. It was evil. There's such a thing as evil, and it's time for you know this is quite a modest resolution. And I would like you to consider calling on our representative Hoyle and our two senators to reverse US policy supporting Israel. We need to at least stop funding them and defending their uh, actions in the United Nations. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Our next speaker is Louis Vidmar, followed by Scott Fife. Is there a Louis Vidmar in the room? Okay, our next speaker is Scott Fife. Louis Vidmar is raising a hand on Zoom. I'm sorry, Louis, this is in-person comment. Our next speaker is Scott Fife, followed by Leilani Sebzalian. 
Yeah, I got an email. I worked for this, you know, I voted for the star voting the first time and I've supported it almost forever. Like when I, I went, I was a, I was at the uh, Green Party convention um, in 2000 and it, we've been calcified into this two party system and there's got to be a way where we can break it because it's like the corporations have two parties. Don't we get at least one? I mean, I, I just, I just, it's just, this is just, I can't believe the city council is, uh, is you know, waffling, waffling on this because I remember when they, we wanted to have um, a city auditor and you, and they brought up an alternate proposal that confused the electorate. And that sounds like that's what you want to do this time. And it's like, what all these muppies we've been passing left and right, you know, basically, we were, we were subsidizing the councilor, the the taxpayers of counts uh, subsidizing concrete production, which is the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases behind China and the United States, and we and we have to pay for it. And now you got a seven-story monstrosity right by the river that you, we've subsidized, and uh, I don't think you know we didn't get a vote on that. I don't think you know we and you, I don't know how you people could do this. You said. Well, you know, we had to, they came by with the th those three special words, won't pencil out what they've all used. And, uh, you know, instead of um, standing for, they said, well, it won't work well, if we don't give them the tax subsidy, a 10 year tax subsidy for 10 years, you know, that they don't pay taxes. And I remember when uh, Whole Foods wanted to move in here, they wanted their, they wanted to have some corporate welfare. And, uh, People stood strong and said no. And guess what? They moved in here anyway. And with the building boom that's going on crazily, you actually believed that uh, without their 10 year tax break, they weren't going to build that seven story monstrosity right by the river? I'll tell you, I don't know. I, we've got to break the system. The Republicans have been in there since, you know, Lincoln, and the Democrats have been in there, you know, since the founding of the country. And I'm sick of both of those parties. I want to see. Uh, the star voting, I want to vote, you know, have a choice of who I can vote for and not just have it this two party, you know, cancel like, is a spoiler. Uh, you know, I'm sick of the whole spoiler thing. We've got it in other places. They've got it in Maine. They've got it in San Francisco. And in fact, I'm moved here from Utah 15 years. Thank you, Scott. Your time is concluded. Our next speaker is Leilani Sabzalian, followed by Brennan Fitzgerald. Good evening, um, Leilani Subzalian, Ward 3, Associate Professor of Indigenous Studies and Education at the University of Oregon. I'm so disappointed that you already voted to pass that resolution. I was very disappointed in the proclamation that you passed. Um, today is the 66th day in what has now clearly become a genocide, according to international human rights experts, as well as scholars of Holocaust and genocide studies um, each day. We witness this genocide via our phones and our laptops. Each day we awake to new horrors and losses to grieve and mourn. It's unbearable to me that 20,000 people, Palestinians, have been killed. Thousands remain trapped in the rubble. Nearly 2 million have been displaced and all have been traumatized. It's even more unbearable to me that people continue to think this is a complex or controversial issue and refuse to take a clear stance. This is not a conflict and it's not a war, like your declaration said. It's genocide. And as people of conscience, we have a moral obligation to condemn genocide in the clearest terms possible. In a context where Palestinians are experiencing intensified state violence, indeed facing their attempted elimination, I do not accept your tepid statement that calls for continued ceasefire peace talks. When dozens of statements by Israeli leaders and army officers in command make clear their intent is to destroy Palestinian people. I do not accept your generic and vague condemnation of actions against certain groups in relation to specific events. I don't even know what that means. The proclamation reminds me of a long-standing pattern of performativity in Eugene and liberal politics more broadly, where people want to appear non-racist rather than take clear anti-racist actions. This proclamation reads to me like a performance a way to appear just without actually taking a clear stance for justice. You stripped the proclamation of the one thing we asked you to say. I don't want performativity. I want a principled stance against genocide and a call for a clear or a clear call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. I appreciated that your proclamation 
affirmed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but Israel is violating the very rights that you say you support as we speak, including people's right to life, right to freedom of movement, and right to leave a country or return. Um, please take your own statements and commitments seriously and revise this declaration. Thank you. Thank you, Leilani. Our next speaker is Brennan Fitzgerald, followed by Mark Osterlow. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Brennan Fitzgerald. I'm a resident of Eugene, a second year graduate student at UO, and a member of the Graduate Teaching Fellows Federation, the Graduate Student Union. Um, when over 18,000 people have been killed and over 1.8 million people have been displaced, when we are witnessing a genocide that's, follow that's following 75 years of apartheid and occupation, this is not the time to hide behind weak language. This is not the time to call merely for a facilitation of de-escalation or a continued ceasefire peace talks, words that mean nothing as we watch a genocide that is funded by our tax dollars occur. At the beginning of this meeting, you did a land acknowledgement describing colonization and displacement of indigenous peoples, and you read out a statement on the importance of human rights. If these are your values, you must stand for them now, not just in retrospect. Um, call for a ceasefire now, a release of all hostages on both sides, and an end to the U.S. military funding of Israel. Thank you, and free Palestine. Yeah, one minute. I just want to remind folks, if you know your ward, please let us know what ward you live in when you're introducing yourself. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next speaker is Mark Osterlow, followed by Jacob True. I live in Ward 5. I'm here to speak about star voting. I'm urging the city councils to step away from making any proposal or taking a stand for or against star voting. Uh, star voting was invented at, in 2014 over here at the University of Oregon where about 100 voting experts from all around the country came together and they had one question, what's the best way to vote? They looked at all the systems, they didn't like any of them and they invented star voting at that time. And for the last nine years, they've done statistical analysis to Harvard, peer reviewed journal articles, and they've tried to game the system every way that they could. And their conclusion is this is the best way to vote and our current system is the worst. We have, amen. Uh, we have uh, collected the signatures to get on the ballot. I don't believe this is a appropriate uh, position for you to take a stand on. The people want to vote on this and say what they think. This was invented by experts. I don't see a voting expert standing up here that have, uh, or political uh, science teachers or people that have done peer reviewed articles on this one. Uh, if we pass this here in Oregon, it'll be the first place in the country. It can be a model for the whole country. I collected over 3,000 signatures in front of the Department of Motor Vehicles, and I talked to probably more people face-to-face -face that are voters in this uh, city than you did in the last three months. And time and time again, people said, we got to change. It stinks right now. We've got this bipartisanship, or not bipartisanship, the uh, Democrats and the Republicans, and it really stinks the way we're having problems right now. This is the opportunity for that to change. Let the people speak. If we pass it here, it'll be a model for the whole country. We could actually be a model for the entire world. And uh, democracy is in a bad way right now. I appreciate your time. And I hope that you will let the people stand and vote on this one and let them make the decision. Don't want to have to have the uh, city council be considered the boogeyman uh, in this situation if they try to do something to muddy the waters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Our next speaker is Jacob True, followed by Nicholas DeGrange. Hello there, everyone. My name is Jacob True. I live in Ward 1. Um, I've been up here many times before, so I'll be brief. Uh, I'm here supporting uh, star voting. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's an excellent way to go forward. Uh, one of the best aspects of it compared to ranked choice voting or indeed uh, first past the post voting is that it's very hard for, to, for you to um, uh, 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 mess up your ballot and have your ballot invalidated. Uh, this increases the ability for folks to have their voice actually heard. And uh, all you gotta do is rank your preference. If you like a vote, uh, if you like a certain candidate quite a bit, give them five. Don't like them so much, give them a two or a three. If you don't like them all, give them a zero. If you leave it blank, it counts as zero. It's a pretty darn simple system. When it comes right down to it, um, you know, uh, it's as easy as filling out a Yelp form. I know not all folks do that, but uh, it's pretty easy when it comes right down to it. 
Uh, I'm also a proud member of the uh, Eugene Springfield Democratic Socialists. Um, you know, a part of why uh, the, the Democratic Socialists have uh, endorsed this is because we believe in democracy. Uh, and the best way for that to actually be reflected is having a voting system that actually works. As you may have guessed, I'm not only here for star voting, I'm also here to speak about uh, your resolution that you just passed regarding uh, the Palestinian conflict uh, over there in um, uh, Israel-Palestine. Uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, I'm afraid your resolution just doesn't re uh, pass the bar of what's necessary for um, uh, uh, opposing the genocide that's clearly going on over there. I'd encourage you to take a look at the um, uh, resolutions that we uh, passed you to, to y'all before or to the uh, detailed email explanations that we've sent you and reconsider. Thank you now. Thank you, Jacob. Our next speaker is Nicholas DeGrange, followed by Valentin Bentz. Hello, my, na my name is Nick DeGange. I live in Ward 1. I want to thank the Council for providing me the opportunity to testify and for considering a resolution. Well, you guys passed a resolution um, calling for peace and opposing the war. Um, what I and members of our coalition, members of the community are requiring is that um, this resolution uh, be changed and made more robust. Um, and here's the six things that... Um, a lot of us are asking for. Uh, number one, uh, this resolution needs to have a permanent ceasefire attached to it. Number two, uh, we want a condemnation of war crimes by Israel, which have targeted uh, innocent civilians, journalists, hospitals, refugee centers, and other critical infrastructure that Palestinians need to live. Number three, an acknowledgement that this war is not between two equal parties. Since early October, Israel has dropped and early October to now, Israel has dropped 25,000 tons of explosives in Gaza, which is equivalent to almost two of the atomic bombs um, dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The fact that Gaza is one of the most densely populated areas on Earth makes the fact that you're dropping, uh, that they're dropping atomic bomb level proportions of explosives even more unforgivable. Number four, we need an acknowledgement of genocide. As the Palestinian death toll rises over 18,000 civilian deaths, um, 18,000 and civilian deaths account for a vast majority of them, it is imperative that we not water down our proposal's language, but rather accurately reflect the state of events happening in Gaza. Number five, opposing additional military aid to Israel. We must morally reject the US funding of genocide and ethnic cleansing and the occupation of Gaza. Therefore, we cannot provide a single dollar of military aid to Israel going forward. Number six, opposing criticism of Israel or Zionism is not anti-Semitism. This rhetoric, this rhetoric is ultimately harmful as it works to silence Semitic voices opposed to this war, including Jew, uh, Jewish and Arab members of this community. Thank you. I hope you will consider making all of these necessary changes. Thank you, Nicholas. Our next speaker is Valentine Bentz, followed by Thomas Hira. Hello, Mayor and Council. My name is Valentine. I live in Ward 5. Um, I'm an undergraduate student at the University of Oregon and an ally of the University of Oregon Students for Justice in Palestine. On behalf of my Palestinian peers and the Eugene Palestinian community, I ask you to reconsider your actions, revise your resolution, and include the following points. One, a call for a permanent ceasefire. Two, a call on all of our elected federal officials, not just the Biden-Harris administration, to demand a permanent ceasefire. And three, a call on elected officials to discontinue aid to the state of Israel while the Israeli government commits genocide against Palestinians. The resolution you passed is insufficient. It is meaningless. This affects people, Palestinian people, in your own community as well. These points represent a bare minimum of justice. Thank you. Thank you, Valentine. Our next speaker is Thomas Hira, followed by Justin Russell. Good evening, Council. Thomas Hira, Ward 7. Um, I'm speaking today as a private individual, and uh, it's a very emotional meeting for me. Uh, I think, because this is a very, very deep and uh, powerful moment. I'm so appreciative that the community can stand up and support the rights of Palestinians, support the rights of Gazans, support um, 
the rights of people to not face collective punishment, to not face um, wanton violence and killing. And I want to urge all of our uh, federal representatives to take action, to speak out against the genocide. Um, I also believe that you have uh, created a resolution that has good in it and that, that there's uh, steps that are uh, steps that are being made, for example, saying right out front that all human life is precious and the targeting of civilians, no matter their faith or ethnicity, is a violation of international human rights. Um, I want to thank Mayor Venice for coming to the event. It was not a very crowded room, but on Saturday you saw an immensely powerful statement of people organized around human rights in this community. And I do hope that the recording is available for people to see. I, I was honored to moderate that panel. I'm honored to try to stand with you and to push for a resolution that will be um, sufficient, uh, that will that will represent so many of the great points that people have made here tonight. Um, and I also believe at the same time, because uh, I also believe at the same time that uh, you are making an effort to speak to the people in power that are not listening, or that that that, uh, and, and the voice that you've that you've chosen. It's a step in the right direction. And as so many people, we got a lot of young people in this room. Sometimes I've turned in a draft of a paper, and I, and I it got torn up and, by a professor. And I thought, you know what? I need to go back to the drawing board potentially. So um, yeah. that that you know, it's a nuanced, it's a difficult conversation for me. Even though some of the uh, some of the matters in this are extremely simple. Um, the the fact that nobody should be targeted based on their faith, their religion. No collective punishment is wrong, and I believe U.S. militarism is wrong. So, I know that my words will seem mealy mouth to some, but I but I try to understand um, the pain that's going on in so many sectors of our community right now. And I strongly urge Joe Biden to uh, act in reverse of what he's been doing. We should not have vetoed at the UN uh, that the. Thank you, Thomas. Your time is concluded. Our next speaker is Justin Russell, followed by Spencer McIntyre. Hello, uh, my name is Justin Russell from West Eugene. I'm here to demand that C Eugene City Council not waste their time trying to oppose star voting. I've heard rumors that you intend to host a work session to consider opposing Measure 2349, and I remember the underhanded tricks that were pulled last time star voting got enough signatures to be put on the ballot. I am a nobody. By virtue of being nobody, I, rep I represent everybody that does not care enough to take part in the broken political system America has concocted for itself. This is my first time writing or reading a script or speaking publicly, and I hope I have enough time to finish it. This is the first time I've cared enough to do any of this, and that should speak volumes. The two-party dilemma we live under is propped up solely and only by the first-past-the-post voting structure. Its spoiler effect, among its many other critical failures, has always and will always guarantee that any election that contains a promising third-party candidate will split the votes of one wing of our political spectrum and cause the less popular wing to win. This vote splitting has created damage beyond repair to every aspect of our politics. In 2016, Bernie Sanders split the left vote, causing Trump to win over Hillary. Exit polling shows that without the spoiler effect, Sanders would have won the election. This is how we got the Proud Boys. In 2000, Ralph Nader split the left vote, causing Bush to win over Al Gore. Polling shows Nader's voters would have voted Gore into office. This is how we got the war in Iraq. In Germany, 1925, Ernst Thälmann split the center vote, causing less popular Hindenburg to win over Wilhelm Marx. A hundred years of study shows that without that spoiler effect, Hindenburg would never have been in a position to appoint Adolf Hitler. This is how we got the Nazis. Star voting is the product of decades of research by the smartest people we have on the job and is the simplest to understand most effective way to stop the problem once and for all. The people of Eugene have decided to put this to practice and put it on the ballot, and I hope you recognize how important this is because this is how we stop the Nazis. Growing up on the brink of poverty, my family lived cross-country in a run-down motorhome, my father laboring far too much to avoid neglecting his kids, all for the sake of achieving the American dream and bringing us up from hauling our own waste in a bucket to owning our own home in West Eugene to selling his hand-blown glass as fine art in Sotheby's auction house. Trust me when I say that I have met, we have met a lot of very different people with very different opinions in a lot of different places, high and low. I tell you this to give weight to our confidence that we know Every real person in that everybody I represent would, if given a real meaningful choice, would always vote for that better third option that we otherwise are scared to support. Star voting gives every voter that choice and your app. Thank you. Justin, your time is concluded. Thanks. Our next speaker is Spencer McIntyre, followed by Emma Scott Lavin. 
Good evening, Mayor and Councilors. My name is Spencer McIntyre. I'm a citizen of Ward 2. Uh, I was one of the authors of the resolution that was submitted this, to this body two weeks ago, and I have to say that I am disappointed, disheartened, and frankly offended by the resolution proposed and unanimously passed by this council today. As it stands currently, $2,687,851 of taxpayer money directly from Eugene, Oregon annually helps to fund the illegal apartheid regime in Gaza by the State of Israel. When I say illegal, I want to note that this is not just an opinion that I personally hold. The UN Security Council recognized Israel's actions as explicitly illegal in resolutions passed in 1979, 1980, and 2016. So when I say that our tax dollars are funding an illegal occupation, genocide, and war crimes, that is quite simply just a fact. The resolution we wrote and provided for you is filled with these hard facts and statistics about the lives of people in Gaza. We made it so easy for you to explicitly support a permanent ceasefire, which is quite frankly the bare minimum of what we can do for our fellow humans in Gaza right now. We, the people of Eugene, implore you to try again. Try again. Um, this was not enough, and the community has already reminded you of what the calls are for and what we've called for, and I have written it, I helped to write it, so I won't repeat them. Um, but I will say that the most up-to-date death toll reports are over 20,000 people dead, over 7,870 children who have lost their lives due to the unjust and illegal attacks on Palestinians. How many more innocent lives need to be lost before you take action in solidarity with Palestinian people? This reminds me deeply of a Desmond Tutu quote. If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. I am deeply disturbed that this governing body is choosing to side with the oppressor in a situation, in, in, this, situ in this situation. Senator Merkley has already joined the national and global call for a ceasefire. Rep Val Hoyle and Senator Wyden have yet to do so. It is our collective responsibility to apply pressure to encourage our representatives to take actions. Your call for peace begs the question, peace for whom? It is certainly not a call for peace for Palestinians, for without justice, there can be no peace. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Our next speaker this evening is Emma Scott Lavin, followed by Jonathan Miller. Hello. Take a momentary breath. We have collected over 3,000 signatures for star voting. I want to propose a question to you. If you had a choice to take an action that would save democracy, but at the same time might risk your own personal political career, what would you choose? I want profoundly to trust you. I'd like to see a show of hands of how many people in this room really profoundly want to trust our city council. So I understand that there's a claim on the table. Star voting is confusing. And that for that reason, there might be reason to support a countermeasure to support the status quo. There's already a measure on the ballot to support the status quo, and that is the opportunity to vote no on star voting. <laughs> so my question is, what is the purpose of the claim that star voting is confusing? I really profoundly want to trust all of you. And everyone in this room wants to profoundly trust you. And I also want to suggest that, well, if you take an action that risks your own political career, but saves democracy, how many people in this room think that actually doing so would actually risk your political career? Can I see a show of hands? <laughs> Do the right thing. Let us vote on star voting and let us speak our choice clearly, loudly, and boldly. Saving democracy or not is really what's on the line here. And if we lose our democracy, people like me, look at me, I'm ridiculous, right? <laughs> I 
if we lose our democracy, may I lose my life. Thank you, Emma. Your time is concluded. Our next speaker is Jonathan Miller, followed by Cy Onera. Good evening, councillors, mayor, and our city manager, who we all know keeps the wheels turning. Uh, my name is Jonathan Whit uh, Miller from Ward 2. Uh, in 2013, after uh, traveling all over the country for more than a year searching for that perfect new city to call home, uh, my wife and I chose Eugene. You know, it had the Cascades and the coast, but not just those things. Uh, we chose it because it was a city that is building for the future, uh, a progressive place that's continually creating policies that other cities hope to emulate. We see it year after year, our new bike lanes. We've got new downtown marketplace, beautiful new library, newish library, brand new riverfront parks, even tonight in this very room, jam-packed with engaged citizens, wielding democracy to make Eugene a better place. In essence, we chose Eugene as our home because it's the kind of city that can make star voting happen. In the coming years, as our technology evolves and climate crisis worsens, you as a council will have to decide on some of the most complex issues you've ever faced. We need a democracy that can keep up. Why let us vote for only one choice when we can just as easily tell you how we feel about every choice? It's simple, saves money, best represents the wishes of the voters, and future-proofs our democracy to tackle these big issues. Moreover, star voting started right here in Eugene will serve as an example for other progressive cities who want to move our democracy forward at the local level and beyond. People will look at this simple yet meaningful revolution in democracy and know it all started here in our city. I know some of you may want your own working session, possibly to look at a voting method at odds with star voting, but the good news is the Good people, the Equal Vote Coalition has already done years of research and all that work for you. Uh, you're busy and probably too busy. You want to represent the will of the voters who have clearly spoken. You want to maintain and elevate Eugene's status as one of our country's great cities. And it's a city I'm so proud to call my home. And if all of this is true, then you should endorse measure 2349 and implement star voting uh, for Eugene elections. And with uh, my final few seconds, I did want to say uh, I love my cat very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Our next speaker this evening is Cy Onera, followed by Wendy Cook. <laughs> Greetings, Council. Uh, my name is Cy. I'm in Ward 1. Thank you, Councilor Sample. Uh, people will say what I want to say much better than myself. Uh, I've looked into star voting. I really appreciate star voting. There's no system worse than first past the post other than dictatorship. Uh, really, anything that we can do to get past first past the post, uh, I'll be thankful for. So thank you for looking into this, and I appreciate all the work you do. Thank you. Thank you, Sai. Our next speaker this evening is Wendy Cook, followed by Jeffrey Gordon. I'm Wendy Cook, Ward 8. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today about the star voting system. So I'll admit the first time I heard about star voting, I figured, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? However, I am concerned that our current one choice voting system is, if not broke, at least struggling in an us versus them political straitjacket. So I took, did take the time to look at star voting as well as ranked choice voting and a few others for good measure. Unlike any other system I looked at, I found star voting offers a way to vote, vote more expressively, more true to my values, and to have the most say as I do. I like that very much. No matter where you land on the political spectrum, each of us wants to feel as if our vote counts. Star voting is remarkably well structured to do just that. First, contrary to what some may fear, star voting is not confusing to use. As I think Jacob put, simply put, it works a lot like Yelp, and you know, Yelp's pretty easy. Um, second, star voting is more expressive. With our current system, we often feel like we have to vote for the candidate who annoys us the least if we want to have a say <laughs> at all. With ranked choice, you have to try to pick precisely who you like best, next best, and so on. And in real life, that's hard to do. It feels forced. With star voting, you simply vote your true feelings about each candidate. Then star's two-round two tallying process incorporates your preferences. 
the, the stars are counted or scored. The two highest scoring finalists go into an automatic runoff. And then your vote goes to whichever the two finalists received your higher score. This means you can give your favorite candidates your highest scores, even if they don't stand a great chance. And yet you still have a say in the runoff among the two most popular vote getters. That is powerful stuff. Uh, Councilor members, even if you're not personally in favor of star voting, I do hope you'll at least let the voters have a clean say on this. Uh, I urge you against using your position of power to add a competing measure on the ballot. And I, I urge you to talk to the star voting organizers because they love, love, love what they're doing and they love nothing better than to inform and and explain and, and probably do it in a way that doesn't make their hands shake. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Your time is concluded. Our next speaker this evening is Jeffrey Gordon, followed by Ashley Wright. Dr. Jeffrey Gordon, Ward 7. I'm here to talk about the urgent need for the city of Eugene to endorse our community's call for an immediate ceasefire in Palestine and Israel. You need to endorse the robust language of the ceasefire re resolution text that we, the people, submitted to this body many days ago. Since this council wrote its own insufficient resolution, I must point out obvious omissions. The statement of commitment to peace rings hollow when you cannot even use the words apartheid, ethnic cleansing, occupation, or colonialism. You draw a false equivalency between the suffering of Palestinians and their colonizers. Keating and Zelenka, you are especially guilty of this. Mayor, I deeply respect your legacy as Vice President of American Near East Refugee Aid. Everyone here should respect that our mayor worked for an organization that stood as one of the few voices in America advocating for the rights and needs of Palestinian refugees at a time when they had no sympathy in American popular consciousness. There is justice in your heart and true knowledge in your mind. So I beg you to guide your colleagues towards a better statement. I know you're not seeking re-election, so this is a last chance to make your legacy as mayor actually represent your professed advocacy for peace. Winter recess may be coming up. Call a special session if you need to. Make it happen. I have one more personal request of all of you. Say out loud tonight that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism for the sake of Jewish peace activists like me that face persecution. By our thousands, by our millions, we are all Palestinians. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Jeffrey. Our next speaker this evening is Ashley Wright, followed by Erica Lyon. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ashley Wright. I live in Ward 2. I've been watching the star voting saga go on for years. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised we don't have it yet. I'm disappointed we don't have it yet. Eugene clearly wants it. Please don't get in its way. I've done plenty of canvassing in my life, not for star voting, but for other things. And I talked to plenty of people who they don't want to talk about anything. They, they're like, no, don't talk to me. I'm I don't even vote. I don't, I just want none of that. And I can't speak for all of them, but I think part of it is that the first past the post system is not very engaging and star voting is very engaging. And your investment in first past the post is suspicious. Um, I'm also here to talk about Palestine. Um, it's very easy to get caught up in keywords. I've been, I've not made any Facebook posts or anything because I really want to make sure that I don't get in the shouting matches about the things that are really distracting. Uh, who's indigenous? What does indigenous mean? Um, I don't mean to dismiss anybody who this is important to them. Um, but what it comes down to is funding the Israeli military is like a vote of confidence for genocide. And we don't want a vote of confidence for genocide. I don't. And so I think we should make this clear in the wording that we don't support funding for the Israeli military. They're actively committing genocide and we don't want to fund this. It'll result in more genocide. I, 
I don't know what kind of twilight zone I live in where I need to break this down. Um, but here we are, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Our next speaker this evening is Erica Lyon, followed by Carver Goldstein. Well, my name is Erica Lyon, Ward 8. At the last city council meeting that focused on star voting, Mayor Lucy Venice called a solution looking for a problem. This implies that there is nothing to be improved from our current voting system. Nothing could be further from the truth. Oregon's voter turnout rate consistently hovers around a third of eligible voters, with the last election having a voter turnout rate of 33.6%. Lane County's turnout rate was slightly higher at around 35%, but still low. The reasons for low turnout are many, but at the root of most of it is the disenfranchisement that many voters feel. As someone who has canvassed for star voting for five years, I have had a chance to talk to many voters about how they feel about voting. Many people who sign say they are sick of their vote not counting. What this means is that voters do not pro feel properly represented in politics. Instead of having a variety of viable options, voters often feel they are choosing between the lesser of evils. This is because our current system of choose one only voting forces voters to throw their entire weight behind one candidate, making them choose between uh, choose between the candidate they really want to win and the candidate that might not be their favorite, but has a better chance of winning and isn't their least favorite. Star voting would solve this problem by allowing voters to support multiple candidates at once. So if their favorite doesn't make it uh, to the automatic runoff, all the scores you give to the other candidates will help them advance. So it's not an all or nothing vote. This would allow the voter to vote more honestly and support the candidates they actually want to win. Another Another advantage of STAR that benefits both voters and elected city officials is that it eliminates the primaries, at least on a local level. This will save the city taxpayer money and the burden of administration. Local candidates will also be freed from the burden of running two campaigns, saving them money and allowing them to focus on their primary tasks of running the government. It would also save voters time and energy. Nonpartisan primary elections are notoriously low turnout. By eliminating these, the voter will be able to focus all their mental energy on the main elections, which tend to draw more, more voter interest. Besides that, Eugene voters are genuinely excited to see star voting on the ballot, as you see tonight. We are co convinced of its benefits and are sick of the current system. The campaign collected over 10,000 valid signatures. If the city councilors want to be in touch with their constituents, they should endorse star voting. It would make Eugene a trailblazer in Oregon and indeed the nation involved. Thank you, Erica. Your time is concluded. Our next speaker is Carver Goldstein, followed by Sarah Wolk. Hi, I'm Carver. I live in the West University neighborhood. Um, initiative and referendum is a way for the people to exercise their democratic rights about how policy should be passed and which policies should be passed. Now, I could speak at length about why I support star voting. But it doesn't really matter what I think, and it doesn't matter what the city council thinks. It's the right of the people to decide if they want star voting. And trying to find an alternative and having this work session to find an alternative seems like an end run around democracy and a way to essentially muddy the waters and confuse the election. So I encourage the city council to cancel this proposed work session and let the people vote on star voting, as is their right, without interference from the city council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carver. Our next speaker this evening is Sarah Wolk, followed by Ben Smith. Hello, my name is Sarah Wolk. I'm the executive director of the Equal Vote Coalition, a peer reviewed and published author on voting reform and a chief petitioner for star voting for Eugene. I couldn't be more proud of what our team has accomplished here. As you know, this year over 14,000 voters signed the petition to put star voting back on the ballot. What you might not know is that we had over 100 canvassers, 98% of our signatures were collected by Eugene residents, one third of our signatures were collected by volunteers, and our campaign spent pennies on the dollar compared to the controversial Holvey recall and gas bill initiatives, literal pennies on the dollar. Star voting has huge public support in Eugene. A majority, 54% of Eugene voters already supported the 2018 initiative, and the world is looking to us to lead on this issue. I'm, ca I'm calling on council to do three things. One, please do not put a competing proposal on the ballot or oppose it. Council should not muddy the waters and obstruct the democratic process. Please let the voters compare star voting with the status quo and decide for themselves. 
I ask that at your next meeting, you move to vote to cancel the planned work session on this and take no further action as a group. Individually, you should support STAR voting. <laughs> Please get informed. At the last work session on STAR, council asked a number of questions and raised a number of concerns as well as some misconceptions that are easily addressed. Here are a few, quickly. STAR voting was invented specifically to address the known flaws with RCV and better deliver on its goals. If you've heard about issues with voter error under RCV, STAR voting fixes that and is super user friendly. If you've heard about delays getting results and issues with miscounts under RCV, STAR addresses that too. STAR voting is tallied with simple addition and results would be available immediately. STAR voting tops the charts in terms of accuracy and it's safe to vote your conscience, as has now been shown in the peer reviewed literature. I'd love to meet with each of you to talk through your questions and give you answers. Do we have any policy wonks on the council? Meet with me. Please take us up on the offer. And please stop saying that star voting is complicated. Yes, it's new, but it's not rocket science. It's just one election in November and it's a five star rating. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Our next speaker this evening is Ben Smith followed by Catherine Price. Hello, uh, good evening, councillors, and uh, thank you for taking the time tonight. Uh, my name is Ben Smith, uh, Ward 8, West Eugene. Uh, Randy Groves, I believe, thank you for your representation. Um, I moved to Eugene from New Zealand to take a psychology research job at uh, UO. I've researched the psychology of decision making, but um, in my personal view, uh, the first past of First past post vote system encourages divisive campaigning because it forces elections into a two horse race between the most popular candidate and the second. But star voting is a carefully designed voting system that takes that right out of elections. It makes campaign campaigning less acrimonious because candidates never have to worry about splitting the vote between allies um, because uh, voters make up their minds and can vote for multiple candidates. Um, the alternative voting system in uh, Oregon that also allows multiple candidates is uh, the uh, ranked choice voting. Um, it's been quite divisive nationwide. Um, I understand it was banned in Idaho, Florida, a few other states. Um, in contrast, uh, star voting is a homegrown method invented here in, or um, making it start here in Eugene. It's popular in Eugene and within the, I understand, uh, within the Eugene city limits. It, um, won a uh, majority um, in the Lane County ballot initiative in 2018. Um, and uh, I think, um, you know, looking at the resistance ranked choice voting is coming up with uh, nationwide um, ranked um, star voting could get ahead uh, and Eugene could really set an example and be a, a trailblazer for the nation uh, if it adopts star voting. Um, and so, uh, encourage you uh, to uh, have a chat to uh, speaker before me, Sarah, and thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, Ben. Our next speaker this evening is Catherine Price, followed by Sienna Fitzpatrick. Good evening, council members. My name is Catherine Price. I'm a constituent of Ward 1. I'm here tonight to urge you to do the bare minimum by calling for an immediate and permanent ceasefire and an end to all military aid to Israel. Your response so far has been unacceptable. I would also like to say that I am here in solidarity tonight with both Jews and Palestinians, and that we are all exacerbating all forms of racism and xenophobia, including anti-Semitism, by funding this genocide. The right path forward includes an eradication of all forms of persecution, but we will never achieve that while funding an ethnic cleansing. It is also very frustrating to me personally that our taxes are being used to bomb hospitals in Gaza when our city doesn't even have a hospital anymore. This is your chance to stop history from repeating itself and you are failing. We need, uh, we will keep demonstrating outside of your offices, marching in the streets, and packing these city council meetings until you call for an immediate uh, and permanent ceasefire and an end to all military aid to Israel, according to the resolution submitted by our community members. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Our next speaker this evening is Sienna Fitzpatrick, followed by Cameron Stringfield. Hello. 
My name is Sienna Fitzpatrick, and I live in College Hill. I'm a graduate student at University of Oregon and a member of the Graduate Teaching Fellows Federation Student Union. I'm here tonight to voice my disappointment with Council's resolution regarding the genocide of Palestinians. I was excited to move to a community that is progressive and isn't afraid to speak out against injustice. But this resolution does not reflect the community's values or our request of you, our representatives. I urge Council to reconsider this resolution for a stronger and more direct statement that fully recognizes what's happening in Palestine, like this one myself and many others tonight have submitted. Also, star voting sounds good. Please let people decide. <laughs> Thank you, Sienna. Our next speaker this evening is Cameron Stringfield, followed by Alan McWayne. All right, my name is Cameron Stringfield. I live in Ward 7. I'm a trans woman here in Eugene. I also ran for Coos Bay City Council twice, so I've been at plenty of city council meetings before. I know how city councils run. I know how slow they can be. I know how disappointing they can be to the people that elect you. You are elected representatives. You're not a think tank. You are an elected government that's supposed to uh, represent your community. So where do I even start? Uh, two weeks ago, I submitted this. This is a community drafted resolution for a ceasefire, among other things that has been stated, like opposing U.S. military aid to Israel, uh, standing with the Palestinian people, uh, overtly saying that um, it, it does everything that, well, the very little amount that your resolution does, and a lot more. It's very strong. Um, to be honest, it seems like you just tossed it in the trash and started from scratch. And that is very um, disappointing and offensive to this community that we elect you as representatives. We give you something that we took the time and effort to write, and then you shred it. I don't know what you did with it, but you didn't You didn't use it. And I know that it might seem uh, like people are coming up and they're being rude to you or they're being uh, super emotional about this, but this is a genocide that is happening. You need to treat it with the weight that it actually has. Um, you know, elections are going to be coming up next year. Constituents might want to know how you stood up in a time of genocide when a lot of people would rather be silent. Did you take a bold stand or did you cower away? Um, to, to go ahead and just point out a couple of things that was wrong with your resolution, you made an equivocation right from the start between Hamas and Israel. How can you do that? I mean, even with the initial attack on October 7th, which was not just Hamas, mind you, Israel killed their own people that day. It's been revealed with Apache helicopters provided by the United States. Um, there were only 1,400 people that died that day as compared to 20,000 Palestinians that have been killed since. It's a clear genocide. It's a textbook definition of genocide. We're asking you to go ahead and endorse a real ceasefire resolution, the one that we've proposed, and also, you won't be a city of peace until you show that. How are you a city of peace when you harass and have so much violence against your unhoused pop? Thank you, Cameron. Your time is concluded. Our next speaker is Alan McWain, followed by Charlie Henderson. Hello, Mayor, Councilors, and uh, Manager Madari. Alan McWain, Ward 1. Three years ago, the M Stadium seemed like such a good idea. It would only cost $40 million. The M's would pay $10 million, and visitors would pay the rest without cost to taxpayers. We now know that they are all false, with a cost over $100 million. Since then, there has been a waiting game with more downsides to this proposal. The M's wait for someone to pay, while their large owner has not chosen other private sites. And the M's wait for $10 million in uncertain sponsorships. The county waits to allocate the increased visitor tax for a $35 million revenue bond for a stadium which won't attract visitors. The Lane Event Center waits for the state to grant $7 million, although it has rejected this amount last June. The public waits for input into the master plan, which is now on hold. The neighborhood waits for hearings on the zoning and permit process. The county has paused this plan until next year and now waits for partial funding from this council, which might choose to wait for voters to decide that. Now, if this stadium is such a bad idea, 
Why don't any stakeholders want to just reject it? Reason one, people say it will revitalize the LEC. Not true. Their own master plan advises against it. It will lose money, take up too much space, and the campus will still need $52 million in maintenance and renovations. Reason two, people say it will support the local economy. Not true. Many studies and numerous vacant stadiums indicate otherwise. Reason number three, people say that Eugene will lose baseball forever. Not true. We do have five local teams, including the Ducks and Drifters, who built their stadium for only $3 million. Many in our community have concluded that the stadium will not happen because the money is just not there. Even with this bond, $38 million is still needed. The LEC is the wrong location for this, and spending money for private baseball franchise is wrong. I hope on Wednesday at your work session, you consider options one or five. Thank you, Alan. Your time is concluded. Our next speaker is Charlie Anderson, followed by Julie Williams-Reyes. I apologize. If my voice uh, shakes, it is not out of fear, it is out of anger. Good evening and thank you for allowing me to address you today. My name is Charlie Henderson, a new member of the Eugene community. When I arrived here a few months ago, I had hoped that progressive state and city council would represent and understand the voices of its residents, including those who need political support. However, I must express my great disappointment with the current resolution regarding the situation in Palestine. In your resolution, you state that all human life is precious and that targeting civilians, regardless of their faith or ethnicity, is a violation of international human rights, which you addressed in the beginning of this meeting. I wholeheartedly agree with the sentiment. However, I must question the call for a temporary ceasefire instead of a permanent one. The lives of innocent Palestinians who are being subjected to a genocidal level of violence cannot be disregarded or treated lightly. As members of this council, I understand that many of you have children you have children with the privilege of going home to your families without fear that your homes will be bombed or that your hospitals will be destroyed. Not that we had one now. <laughs> Meanwhile, parents in Palestine are returning to what was once their home. Their bodies of their children disfigured and torn apart. Their hands stained with the blood of their infants. I implore you as human beings, perhaps, to prioritize the lives of these innocent civilians and demand a permanent ceasefire. In section two of your resolution, you mentioned the feelings of great anguish, loss, and despair. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that as individuals sitting in America, we have the privilege and safety of security. Therefore, we have no right to claim genuine sadness by the loss of life in Palestine. We must hold ourselves accountable and take meaningful action to address the ongoing war crimes and genocide in the region on a Holocaustal level. If we fail to establish a permanent ceasefire and hold Israel accountable for its war crimes, who will be the next victims? We have a moral obligation to prevent the further suffering of injustice. I plead with you to reevaluate the resolution, prioritize the lives of innocent Palestinians, and advocate for the permanent ceasefire. You are welcome for my time. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Our next speaker is Julie Williams Reyes, followed by Bill O'Brien. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Julie, and I use pronouns they, them, and I am a GE um, graduate student at the University of Oregon in the philosophy department. And I've lived here in Eugene for about seven years or so, and I'm not sure, actually, the ward that I'm in. I move around a lot, but I believe I'm in the ward of the captive maternal. I am an anti-imperialist, an anti-racial capitalist, and an anti-war. I'm using this time that I am lauded to speak face-to-face -face with my immediate and direct representatives of my rights, beside myself, of my lived experience, experiences in the city of Eugene, Oregon, and all of the very little of my tax dollars that go to the support of the locale of Lane County, where I live, work, struggle, and love in community, and through community, to ask you all as elected officials to assume your radical freedom with me and the people here and the world over as we try to assume the depths and demands of our assumed and right now privileged that's not the way freedom is supposed to be, but privileged freedom and respond to the calls and distress and genocide and power.
Palestine, among other places. I have read your resolution, and it is not enough at this time. Thousands of people are dying, and the genocide of Palestinian people, not to mention the indigenous people of Turtle Island and marginalized people around the world, over this genocide is not just starting, it is in process, and we need to inform how it ends. I recognize the work you do, and I'm grateful for what you do, what you do that I cannot do. However, I need you to see the distress that we carry in our hearts and lives and futures as we witness this tragedy of genocidal violence. Right now, you do not see me. I am forced to consent to your procedures and processes, but what about my needs for consensual discourse? What about the work of my communities and I have done in support of human rights before this Human Rights Day, before human rights campaigns? at the time of marinage, at the time of the colonial imposition, at which we didn't wait for some reified date legitimized, legitimized by the state. Yes, we call for an immediate ceasefire, and we, through practical action and examples, we want to shift our material resources and conditions, such as the financial resources that we are using to support the genocide through funding of military investments of Israeli forces. Um, we must boycott, divest, and sanction Israel. We must oppose U.S. funds to military and genocide. I'm using my time to ask you not just to listen to the members of this town and across the world. Thank you, Julie. Your time is concluded. Our next speaker this evening is Bill O'Brien, followed by Luna Wicker. I almost didn't want to come down today. So I uh, was at home and I was trying to contact you people. And at first I got Mailer Damon. And then I then I finally got one to mayor and city council manager. Please no watered down resolution proposal concerning Israel-Palestine. My understanding of City Eugene is proposing strongly worded measure to all parties. Until there is a two-state solution concerning Israel and Palestine, and the powers that be are, are feckless and morally bankrupt. So that includes the UN, that includes the United States, that includes Israel, that includes Saudi Arabia, that includes Iran, that probably includes Jordan as well. You know, it's just fucked up. Excuse my language. Um, you know, I 1948, the state of Israel was established through Western powers. Wonderful. That's great. Then I'm, the, my understanding of history, the, um, through the ensuing conflicts, Israel took over, over territories. And so you have basically a Palestine that is basically uh, almost Jordan. That's where the boundaries at. They need, I don't know who's going to do it, because they've been talking about a two-state solution. They've been talking out of both sides of their mouth. When they say, oh, we want a two-state solution. No, we can't have a two-state solution or something. you got all these factions in, in the Israeli government. They don't want it. And then I think the, a lot of the Arab countries, they, they use the pa Palestinians as a bargaining chip. And the United States is more concerned about hegemony and uh, powers that be. Well, Israel is overreaching. Okay, I'm sorry about 14,000 people dead and all this horrible stuff, but you got basically a huge area of Palestine, 2 million people, 80% of it's destroyed. And uh, who's going to rebuild it? Israel says, oh, we don't want to do it. The Arab people don't want to do it. The Arab countries don't really want to do it either because they're going to be mixing with Israel. Someone has to do it. The United States vetoed in the security resolution with Britain, basically abstaining to, uh, to to nix it so and and as far as your resolution you have to say point blank i don't know what the your thank you bill your time is concluded our next speaker this evening is luna wicker followed by aiden c to remind everyone that we do not allow profanity so there was a slip in that one but i appreciate how um careful you've all been and just encourage you to keep it up thank you Hello, <clears throat> I'm Luna Wicker, a constituent of Ward 3 and an undergraduate student at the University of Oregon. As of today, over 20,000 Palestinians have been killed, including over 7,000 Palestinian children and 2 million have been displaced. This is a genocide and we must not use watered down language or take neutral stances on war crimes. I urge the Eugene City Council to pass the resolution that has been posited by many of the people here 
today rather than the watered down version that was passed recently. This is a time critical matter and people's lives are on the line. Free Palestine. Thank you, Luna. Our next speaker this evening is Aiden C., followed by Adam Kufold. Uh, hello, everybody. I don't know what uh, what you call the area that you live in, but I don't know where that is, but I live in the Eugene area. Um, <laughs> trust. Um, I um, wanted to talk about the genocide in Palestine. Um, Understand, I mean, 20,000 uh, dead and the numbers rising might seem like a big number. Um, so I wanted to read you guys a poem um, by one such Palestinian, Rafat al -Arir. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail, so that a child somewhere in Gaza will look in heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself. Seize the kite, my kite you made, flying up above, and thinks for a moment an angel is there, bringing back love. If I must die, let it bring hope, let it be a tale. Um, this poet, this writer, Rafat al uh was killed uh, by the IDF, a bombing on his home with his family, um, his wife and his kids. Um, so if you want to keep your resolution the way it is, um, we, I guess the people of Eugene will know what set of history you guys are on. Thank you, Aiden. Our next speaker is Adam Kufold, followed by Sass. Is there an Adam in the room? Okay, our next speaker is Sass, followed by Chelsea Cahoon. Uh, Mayor Venice and Eugene City Council, thank you for having me. My name is Sass, and I'm the deputy director of the Equal Vote Coalition, a Eugene based nonprofit that advocates for true equality in the vote itself through research and education. In May 2024, Eugene voters will have the opportunity to vote on Measure 20-349, which, if passed, would establish star voting for all Eugene public elections. As a leader in voting method reform, I urge Eugene voters and city council to support this measure. Star voting is a modern, simple voting method that empowers voters to vote both honestly and expressively while delivering highly accurate results and ensuring that every voter has an equally powerful vote. Under star voting, voters score candidates from, v from zero up to five stars, giving their favorites five stars, their last choice is zero, and scoring others as desired. The two candidates with the most stars overall are finalists, and your one full vote automatically goes to the finalist you scored higher than the other. The finalist with the most votes wins. Not only would star voting require zero hardware upgrades or major logistical changes to Lane County's election, uh, election system and process, this measure actually reduces costs and complexity. Under our current system in Eugene, there is a nonpartisan primary in May for local offices. If one candidate gets over 50%, then they win the seat. Otherwise, the two candidates with the most primary votes go on to a separate runoff election in November. This is confusing, inconsistent, and forces primary campaigns to gamble on whether the November election will be consequential. This measure eliminates the low turnout primary in May and consolidates local races into a single general election in November when turnout is at its peak, simplifying the process and bringing consistency to our local politics. In October, this body voted to hold a work session to create a competing measure on the same ballot in May. The charter amendment crafted by the star voting team is excellent, and Eugene voters will be excited to support this, as evidenced by the city's 54% majority vote in favor of star voting when it was on the ballot countywide in 2018. Council, try as you might, there is no better voting system measure you could put on the ballot. There are other pressing issues to focus on right now, so Eugene City Council, please, at your upcoming work session this Wednesday, make a motion and vote to cancel your work session on a competing measure. Please, uh, thank, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sass. Your time is concluded. One last call for Adam Kufold. Okay, our next speaker is Chelsea Cahoon, 
followed by Sam Shaw. Hey, if my voice shakes, it's because I'm angry and it's because I also have social anxiety. So this is really hard for me. Um, so I'm coming to you today as a resident of Springfield and a Navy veteran with five years of military service. I'm here to reject the weak watered down resolution drafted by the council and affirm my position in support of the resolution drafted by the members of this community. Fighting for humanity should be easy. It should be second nature. What makes it hard is when others don't join the fight when they have the power to do so. I am stunned and appalled at the lack of conviction, morality, humanity, as well as the complacency and complicity shown by the members of this council, as well as most members of U.S. government, in standing up against the current genocide being taken place against the Palestinian people. Any human being with any sense of morality would be against the assault that did take place on October 7th, and I want to be clear that I express that sympathy and agree with that as well. I have seen Oregon elected officials' responses in condemning this attack as well. However, two months has passed. I have not seen a condemnation against Israel and their onslaught as the death toll of Palestinian civilians reaches the number of 2,000 lives lost, over 50,000 injured, and several thousands missing under the rubble. I have not seen condemnation against the war crimes of collective punishment, the bombing of schools, hospitals, and refugee camps brought against the Palestinians. I have not seen the condemnation for the unprecedented targeted attacks and deaths against journalists in Gaza in order to silence them. I have not seen the condemnation of Israel who have cut off almost all access to food, water, electricity, and medical supplies to Gaza. I have not seen the condemnation of apartheid and illegal occupation that the Palestinians have suffered now for 75 years. This hypocritical rhetoric that you have adopted would almost be comical if it hadn't resulted in the deaths of so many humans. What you have done so far, I can assure you, is not enough. I have a 15-month-old daughter. I see her face in the images of the martyred children I see in Gaza. I get to hug her, feed her, put her to bed, and while I'm so incre incredibly grateful I am able to keep her safe, I ask myself how the lives of Palestinian children could possibly mean less than hers by so many elected officials. How lucky I am to continue to watch her grow and learn when thousands and thousands of Palestinian mothers and fathers can no longer do the same. There are thousands of orphans as a result of this genocide, and too many continue to give lackluster support in stopping this. We have seen this kind of dehumanization on display in history before and how catastrophic those results were. Why would we allow for this to happen again? Now is the time to give full unconditional support to the liberation of Palestinian people. Only then can Israel and Palestine live in peace. It is our responsibility to demand an immediate ceasefire now end the occupation and send humanitarian aid to Gaza before more innocent lives are lost. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Based on our 90 minute time limit, our next speaker, Sam Shaw, will be our final speaker this evening. How's it going? Uh, Ward 7. My name is Sam Shaw and I'm asking you to can't stop and cancel plans for a work session on star voting. You folks on the council that oppose star voting claim that it's too confusing for the general public to understand, but I don't know if you're expecting having two opposing ballot measures on voting on a ballot to be easier to understand. <laughs> I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but star voting is true, truly as simple as stated. Score your candidates, mail in your ballot. It's also much easier than ranked choice voting for election officials to deal with the data since it's just addition. Updating the way we run elections is even now more than ever, and opposing star voting because it's different is like wanting the public to wear wooden clogs because tying their shoes is too big of a change that they won't be able to handle. When star voting went to the ballot for Lane County, 54% of people in Eugene voted in favor of star, and we only gained more support and educated the public more on its benefits. If you openly oppose star voting, you're more than welcome to put your name as the opposition on the ballot. Um, but no, it may cost you in the next election, uh, election when people see your name as the opposition and people vote in favor of Star. A plan to create an op opposing ballot measure is such a blatant way to try to undermine a process that Eugene Public worked really hard to get on the ballot and supports. It looks bad, smells bad, and will reflect on all of you counselors. Even if some of you support Star, your name will still be attached to that session knowing that that opposing ballot measure got to the ballot in that matter. It's so easy to be against everything that you, these days, and here's a chance to be for something and champion it. So please stop and cancel the star voting work session. Thank you, Sam. Mayor, that was our final speaker. Thank you very much. I actually, uh, I, this was a very impassioned uh, public comment period, and I really want to appreciate all of you for uh, you, delivering your comments very clearly uh, very respectfully of one another. Um, there was I, there was quite a bit of chuckling in the room, and that's you know, we can we can ride with that. But I I do want to thank you for that. And we got through a lot of names. I apologize for the last few that didn't get a chance to speak, but you got through a long list of names. So thank you for making time for one another. 
I do. I'm going to turn this over to council, but I do want a uh, moment of clarification. I'll look to the manager and look to the uh, attorney. We are required by state law to um, to meet and to discuss a uh, a referral to the to the ballot uh, to determine whether we're referring it to the ballot or or doing something. So we must have that work session. The content of that work session, the council is free to decide whether. They're going to do just let it go to the ballot, do nothing about it, whether they're going to offer an alternative or whether they're going to vote in support. So I just want you to understand we will hold that work session because we are required by law. Am I? Is there any more clarification you want to offer? Yeah, this is the, the one that's required by your city code you had, but it had to be held in a very, very quick turnaround oh, time. Right. And so, but it does have the same options still exist, which would be to support, to refer a, a, opposing or different um, or do nothing and or to oppose and so those same lists what was requested of the council was can we just have can we just talk about it at another work session so those same four options are exactly what's in front of you again right so thank you thank you for reminding me where we are in that process and clarifying for the public appreciate that any other comments or questions from the council Okay, I think, again, I want to thank all of you for your testimony. We appreciate the energy and the thoughtfulness that came into your uh, attending us today. And uh, with that, we actually have other council business to move on to. So uh, we will go on to the next to the next items. Thank you again. Uh, next on our agenda is consent calendar two. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the items on consent calendar two. Second. All in favor, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Thank you. Great. I right, saw. Thank you. So that passes unanimously. And so now I'm going to give folks just a moment to sort of clear out of the room here. So if I could ask you all to move out of the room, you can have a conversation in the hall, but we do have a, another uh, I'm not sure they heard you. Hearing. I don't think they heard you. I think they're moving. They're moving. They're moving. <clears throat> Remember who you were. Cease fire now. <laughs> Okay. Don't make decisions based on being reelected. Make decisions so that we will reelect you. <laughs> okay. All right. Quiet enough for the next round. All right. So, um, our our next item is a public hearing a resolution adopting a supplemental budget making appropriations for the city of eugene for the biennium beginning july 1 2023 and ending june 30th 2024 i'll now open the public hearing on this uh, resolution adopting supplemental budget for the city of eugene and uh city manager you wish to speak to this sure thank you mayor this public hearing provides an opportunity for the city council to receive public input on the 2023 through 2025 December supplemental budget for the city of Eugene. The December supplemental budget reconciles beginning working capital, capital carryover, and the reserve for encumbrances based on actuals from the prior year. Additionally, the SB appropriates funds from the prior fiscal year for projects that were not that were started but not completed and includes other un unanticipated changes in legal appropriations for the current fiscal year. After the proposed supplemental budget actions, the reserve for revenue shortfall will total 13.7 million or 3.4% of general fund expenditures, which is below the 4% target level. Uh, the budget committee, we met with you last week uh, to review the proposed supplemental budget and allow more time for feedback and questions. And as customary uh, at the December supplemental budget, we're requesting uh, action as well to take care of necessary legal appropriations. Staff are here for questions, and that'll be true of the next item as well. Okay, thank you so much. With that, I uh, now open the public hearing, and uh, I turn it over to Cherish to share the list of speakers. 
We have one speaker for the first hearing of the evening, and that speaker is John Borofsky. <laughs> Shocking. John, you have two and a half minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City Manager, John Borofsky, Ward 3. Thanks for the opportunity to speak on supplemental budget number one for the city of Eugene. Um, I just want to take a few things and a few minutes and point out some of the the good things that are in this supplemental budget. I appreciate the budget committee having an opportunity to go over it uh, with this new biennial type of budget. Um, there's some really positive things that you guys can be championing as as moving forward with this budget. There's some reappointment appropriations of some ARPA money, uh, $277,000 for child care upgrades at the Boys and Girls Club. There's $3.7 million in unhoused community response that is being put forward in this one. There's also a lot of things in some of the other funds that usually get washed over. Everybody thinks of the general fund. Um, the capital projects, you guys are following council priorities and putting $1.8 million into that to help maintain the capital that the city of Eugene affords $1 million over the next two years for the uh, Affordable Housing Trust Fund, one of council's priorities. Uh, Fund 330, the system development charge. There's a lot of uh, things that are being funded with that in, in many wards, the Santa Clara Community Park, Delta Ponds Loop, Lincoln School Park, Train Song Park, all are, are in this supplemental budget and being funded through SDC charges. Fund 340, the transportation capital. There's money for sidewalks, bicycle improvement bridge, uh, study for the bridge over uh, Beltline. Eighth Avenue improvements are in that fund. Fund 520, the parking fund. For years, we've had been struggling to take care of our parking infrastructure. There's money that's going into that. And then lastly, one of the things of concern, and I know all of you are, are very aware of this, is that there is a quite a large uh, increase in personnel costs, almost $4 million in this biennium that is was not there in the last one that is being funded out of this supplemental. So a lot of good stuff, but also some things to keep an eye out on. Thank you, John. Okay, and John was our only speaker. Are there any comments or, oh, let me close the public hearing. Are there any uh, comments from council or questions? All right, if seeing none, I will turn it over to council president. Thank you, Mayor. A move to adopt a resolution adopting a supplemental budget, making appropriations for the city of Eugene for the biennium beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30, 2025. Second. All in favor, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you so much. That passes unanimously. I will now um, close the city council meeting and open the December 11th, 2023 meeting of the Urban Renewal Agency. And this is also a public hearing and action um, a resolution adopting a supplemental budget making appropriations for the Urban Renewal Agency of the City of Eugene for the biennium beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2025. So I now open that hearing for the supplemental budget for the Urban Renewal Agency and again, turn to the agency director. Thank you, Mayor. This public hearing provides an opportunity for the agency board to receive public input on the 2023 through 2025 December supplemental budget for the Urban Renewal Agency. Supplemental budget reconciles beginning working capital and capital carryover based on actuals from the prior year. Additionally, the URASB recognizes the downtown district budget for FY25 after the life of the district was extended by the agency board. It also allocates $50,000 for steam plant site security and cleaning while the property awaits redevelopment. Approval is requested tonight to allow for necessary legal appropriations. Okay, thank you very much. We'll open the public hearing and Cherish, do we have a list of speakers? We have one speaker for the second hearing of the evening and that speaker is John Borofsky. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Ski Ward 3, thank you. Um, 
There's not a lot in this supplemental budget. It's it's pretty straightforward. The reason I wanted to speak on this one is to is to thank you, uh, Council, for the changes that you made to the uh, amending the the urban renewal agencies. It's a very important tool uh, in helping reestablish a lot of the 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 priorities that I think our community has. Um, in revitalizing some areas that that need revitalizing i applaud you for your courage in in raising the debt limit on the riverfront one to a, a higher number as we know there's a lot of needs in that area and prices keep going up so i, th I applaud you all for doing that and uh you know i was i was looking at my my uh calendar today and i said should i come down to the and speak to the supplemental budgets, or should I go to the women's basketball game this evening? And I probably could have done both, it, knowing how long <laughs> the public comment was, but I had to be here to sign up. Um, and I look back just for retrospect to see when I started doing this at supplemental budgets, and it was over 16 years ago that I started standing up here. So somebody's got to stand up and and light a candle for all you guys and thank you for all you do so thank you thank you john mayor that was our final speaker mm -hmm. thank you so much are there any comments uh councilor Sutton? Close it first oh oh I'll close that hearing sorry and comments i see councilor Sutton. thank you mayor i would like to thank john borowski for uh, being an example of dependability <laughs> i appreciate your insight and your 16 years Keep coming. And Councilor Gross. Thank you, Mayor. I too wanna to thank you, John, for your continued steadfast um, work in this area. Uh, there is a 12 step process <laughs> for that, but um, in all seriousness, I, I do appreciate you and um, what you contribute to our community. So thank you. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Okay, I will just add my thanks, John, for your your persistence and your perseverance in the clarity of your remarks. Okay, with that, put a motion on the table. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve a resolution adopting a supplemental budget, making appropriations for the Urban Renewal Agency of the City of Eugene for the biennium beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30, 2025. Second. All in favor, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that passes unanimously. Thank you all very much. Thank you, team, for keeping it all going, and we are adjourned.